when the capital development of a country becomes the byproduct of the activities of the casino, the job of capitalism is likely to be ill done, and so it has been ill done in the recent era. And Minsky says pretty much the same thing, a little bit longer. In a capitalist economy, the past, the present, and the future are linked not only by capital assets and labor force characteristics, but also by financial relations. The key financial relations link the creation and ownership of capital assets to the structure of financial relationship and changes in that structure. Institutional complexity may result in several layers of intermediation between the ultimate owners of the community's wealth, stockholders we'll call them, and the units that control and acquire and operate the community's wealth, the managers and the corporations. And that is today's agency society, as we'll soon be talking about. Minsky continues, like all profit-seeking entrepreneurs in the capitalist economy, bankers are well aware that innovation assures profits. Thus, bankers, indeed all intermediaries in finance, are merchants of debt. Merchants of debt. Now, there's a clever phrase. And pretty true, too. Who strive to innovate in the assets they acquire and the liabilities they market. This newest stage of capitalism, money manager capitalism, became a reality in the 1980s as institutional investors, then the largest repositories of savings in our country, began to exert their influence on financial markets and business enterprises. The raison d'etre for money managers and the basis by which they are held accountable is the maximization of the value of the investments made by their clients. Not surprisingly, therefore, Minsky continues, business executives became increasingly attuned to short-term profits and the stock market valuations of their firms. Hear Keynes in those words? The growing role of institutional investors fostered continued financial system evolution by providing a ready pool of buyers of securitized loans, structured finance products, and myriad other exotic innovations. Innovations is not a good idea in the financial world, my opinion. Minsky concluded, something is basically wrong with the financial structure. End of quote. Now to my own views of the financial system, flawed as it is, and they closely parallel those of Minsky and Keynes. So let me turn to my concerns about the current status of our giant publicly held corporations and our giant investment institutions, which are now largely owned by, yes, giant publicly held financial conglomerates. Both corporate America and investment America represent a peculiar mix of business and profession but they have moved a long way from the traditional values of capitalism. The origins of model, modern capitalism, you historians here will know, beginning with the Industrial Revolution, really, in eight, Great Britain back in the late 18th century, had to do, yes, with entrepreneurship and risk-taking, with raising capital, with vigorous competition, with free markets, and with returns on capital going to those who put up the capital. Central to these values of early capitalism was the fundamental principle of trusting and being trusted in return. But by the latter part of the 20th century, we were to witness the erosion of the very structure of capitalism. Not only had trusting and being trusted come to play a diminishing role, but the actual owners of our businesses were relegated to a secondary role in the functioning of the system, a result of two major developments, neither of which have attracted nearly the attention and analysis they deserve, and I will now talk about them. First, in our old ownership society, the shares of our corporations were held almost entirely by direct stockholders. But today, it is giant financial institutions that call the tune. Since 1950, think about this, the direct ownership of stocks by individual investors has plummeted from 92% of all shares to 30% while indirect ownership by institutional investors has soared from 8% to 70%. Amazing! Our old ownership society is gone, and it is never going to return. In its place, we have a new agency society in which our financial intermediaries hold effective control of American business. But these new agents haven't behaved as agents should. While investing other people's money should be based on trust and stewardship, our corporate managers, our pension managers, and our mutual fund managers have too often put their own financial interests ahead of the interests of the principals with whom they are duly bound to represent those hundred million or so families who are the owners of our mutual funds 
and the beneficiaries of our pension plans. Some 200 years ago, this agency problem was well described. Managers of other people's money rarely watch over it with the same anxious vigilance with which they watch over their own. Not very surprising. They very easily give themselves a dispensation. Negligence and profusion must always prepare, but must always prevail. And the author, I'm sure you know this, of those words, those wise words, was none other than Adam Smith. And so in the recent era, negligence and profusion are all over the place with our money manager agents, even to the point of an almost complete disregard, in my view, of their duty and responsibility to their principles. Too few managers seem to display that anxious vigilance over other people's money that wants to find the conduct of investment professionals. The second reason for the debasement of our values of traditional capitalism is that our new investor agents not only seem to ignore the interest of their principals, ALS, also seem to forget their own investment principles, LES. Nice play on words there. In the latter part of the 20th century, the predominant focus of an institutional investment strategy turned from the wisdom of long-term investing to the folly of short-term speculation. And during the recent era, we entered the age of expectations investing, where projected growth in corporate earnings, especially earnings guidance and its achievement, by fair means or foul, became the watchword of investors. Never mind that the reported earnings were too often a product of financial engineering that served the short-term interest of corporate managers and the short-term interest of Wall Street security analysts alike. But when, think about this, when long-term owners of stocks become short-term renters of stocks, and when the momentary precision of the price of the stock takes precedence over the internal vagueness of the intrinsic value of the corporation itself, concern about corporate governance is the first casualty. Why would you care about corporate governance if you're going to hold the stock for, as some of these high-frequency trading fund firms do, for an average of 11 seconds? An average of 11 seconds. I'm not making that up. Uh, they, they, they don't and shouldn't care about corporate governance. Uh, uh, so corporate governance is the first casualty of this speculative focus. Yet the single most important job of the corporate director is to assure that management is creating a long-term value for shareholders. So when that goal becomes secondary, our new became secondary, our new investors didn't even seem to care. While their 70% ownership position in virtually every major corporation in the country gives these institutional agents absolute voting control of corporate America, all we hear from these money managers, you know this, is the sound of silence. Not only because they are more likely to be short-term speculators than long-term investors, but also, an interesting sideline, because who do you think is managing the pension and thrift plans of those giant corporations? Uh, it's these managers. They hold the stocks, and thus they face a serious conflict of interest when controversial proxy issues are concerned. This conflict is pervasive, for as it is said, Money managers have only two types of clients they don't want to offend, actual and potential. And that is a lot of clients. Actually, I think that's everyone. And so in corporate America, we have witnessed staggering increases in executive compensation, not only unjustified by corporate performance, but also grotesquely disproportionate to the pathetically small increase in real inflation-adjusted compensation of the average worker. Actually, it's lower now than it was 20 years ago. Financial engineering that dishonors the idea of financial statement integrity and the failure of the traditional investors, traditional gatekeepers, to rely on to oversee corporate management, our regulators, our legislators, our auditors, our attorneys, our directors. So it's hard high time for the, the gatekeeper that remains uh, are now empowered institutional agents with all that voting power to fight for the rights of their investment principles, honoring their agency responsibilities of corporate ownership and exercising their right of overseeing governance for the benefit of their principles, which is essentially us.